Oh, hey, didn't see you there. <laughs> so we are going to be painting our automatic transmission that we pulled out of our 99 Chevy Suburban and we are going to paint it this purple sparkly color just like we painted the pan. We did this with a whole bunch of random paints that we got from O'Reilly's and uh, Home Depot and we're also going to use a way overkill clear coat from PPG that's cost almost as much as all the paint combined. The first paint we're going to use is an aluminum etching primer since the transmission is made out of aluminum. The next paint is going to be a gold base. Next we're going to have some glitter silver paint. We're also going to use this purple paint. Now this says metallic. Um, it's more of like a candy coating, less than a metallic, but it'll look pretty good on these other two paints. And lastly, we're going to use this clear coat that we're actually going to spray out of a real paint sprayer, and it's a little overkill for what we're doing, but it'll look pretty good, and it'll be a lot easier to clean. First thing we want to do is get this cleaned up. We've got some dish soap here. This is lemon with real citrus extract for that lemon fresh. And we've got copper and stainless steel Scotch-Brite pads and copper and stainless steel brushes. Something that we're going to need to make sure we do properly is tape off these connectors and fill some holes like this servo hole. Now we took the servo out because we're gonna paint the servo cover itself black, which might look even extra cool under the car while nobody will ever see it. That tape is not gonna stay. This is the crappiest like painter's tape I think I've seen. That's the platinum. Cover this connector up. So we took our 4L60E marker label off of here. That way we can paint over it now or paint over where it's supposed to be now and then put the sticker back on later, maybe restore it. That way we don't lose the identification and tracking information of this transmission. The neutral safety switch slides over this. So we're gonna tape this off too, just to make sure that the neutral safety switch doesn't have any fitment problems when we go to put it back on. So this is the output shaft where the drive shaft slips into and we really don't wanna get paint into here. So I have this rubber glove. I'm gonna slip that over the top and there we go. Perfect. If you want a condom, that would make it way better. <laughs> and because that worked so well, I'm gonna take a second glove and put it over this connector that we taped up earlier because I don't really trust this tape. And if we get water into this connector, I do believe it will fail. Perfect. One more sensor that we have to cover is the vehicle speed sensor, which is over here. We're just gonna tape that up too. Wow, it looks way better than it was before. <laughs> okay. Well, that was working. So we're going to hose off and rinse this transmission as it sits. We're not gonna use a pressure washer right now because the pressure washer might be too much pressure and it might get into, it has a better chance of getting into the connectors like these electrical connectors here and shorting things that we don't want to do that. So we're going to give it as light of a rinse. That would be too heavy as well. Uh, let's go to there. As light as a rinse as we can possibly give it. So we're going to use this leaf blower and try to blow off as much of this water as we can so that our etching primer has the best chance of etching its way into our aluminum case. Last step before we apply our primer is we're going to use this SEM prep solve. It's basically an alcohol solution and that'll help bond to water and evaporate it and one more last chance of sticking properly. We're going to wipe it down with these shop towels. All right, first coat. We don't want to go too heavy. We kind of want to do a light dusting but we're going to do that for probably three or four coats and we'll see how it looks. First coat is applied. We're gonna give that about 10 minutes to rest, or five minutes, and then we're gonna do the next coat. So we just finished priming the transmission. As you can see, it looks much better than it did before. Way less dirty looking. So the next step is to apply our color base coat, which we're going to use this gold spray paint that we picked up at Home Depot. Let's get it on there. Uh, make sure you point this right at your face when you try to clean out the nozzle. Hey, sweet, there we go. We 
We have our gold base coat on. It looks fantastic, but we are gonna keep going because we do really, really want it to be purple. So the next coat is going to be this glitter paint. Now this one, we're going to do an extremely light coat. The glitter is really, really coarse and we don't want that much glitter or else it'll cause a lot of imperfections in the clear coat layer that we're going to apply later. So let's get this coat on there. That was our one coat of glitter. That's all we're going to do for the glitter. The next one we're going to put on is we're going to start with Poof, wow, it just appeared in my hand. Purple anodized coating. So normally you wanna use light coats when painting, but this one is takes that to the extreme and we wanna use really, really light coats. And we're gonna shoot for about six or seven of those really, really light coats. Everything you're looking at right now is all of our seven coats of that purple anodized paint. And now it's time for the clear. In the past, we haven't had the best of luck using a rattle can clear coat. And that's why we're stepping it up to use a two part clear coat like this one. This one will have a much better shine than anything out of a rattle can and will be easier to clean. and will be much more durable. That was our last coat of clear. We used three coats of clear coat, and now we're gonna roll it back into the garage, wait two days, and then we're gonna see how it cures. We finished the painting and we let the clear coat cure for about three weeks, and this is how it turned out. Thank you for watching. If you want to follow along with us when we shoot our future videos, you can follow my Instagram. It's at Brian Leishman. I'll have it in the description below. If you liked the video, like the video. If you want to subscribe for more, please subscribe for more. It would mean so much to us and we will catch you in the next one.